I put on a black wig, got black contacts, used some makeup, and turned into a real Korean. All right, let's start talking about Natlin Reesley and Natlin Sino. Boom, baby, Kanik is here. All right, who is Kanik? He is an attack scaling Dendro DPS who is dependent on the presence of burning and or burgeon. His best teams will primarily be focused around burning currently. Why are his best teams focused around burning? Say it with me. The problem is Sha Ling. Garbage character. Unfortunately true. We got another one. Another character bricked by Shang Ling. Here we go again. Anyway, back to Kanik. When Kanik uses his elemental skill, he enters a Dendro normal attack state with the Night Soul aspect. Night Soul is the Nalan mechanic. We're just gonna move on. Pretend it doesn't do anything. When Kanik is in his elemental skill, his normal attacks turn into loop shots that do elemental skill damage. He continuously generates points as he generates points, he will be able to fire scale shot cannons or scale spiker cannons. The optimal Kinik combo is N2E. As long as the reactions he requires are present, you will be able to do four N2Es in the present build for Kinik's kit. So his gameplay is E, N2E, 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 and you can just burst sometimes if you want. Speaking of his burst, he has a really cool mechanic that I wish more characters had. When you use his elemental burst during his uptime, he gets the duration of his uptime back instead of losing it. Really nice anti-grief mechanic. Good job, Hoyo, I like that. His burst does off-field dendro damage. It's not the most important thing in the world, but use it if you have it, it's damage. Damage is damage and more damage is good. I mentioned that he enters his elemental skill and throws loop shots and scale spiker cannons. I didn't talk about the gimmick, which is he revolves around the enemy while he does this, or he can revolve around the enemy while he does this. He locks on to the center and you can skate back and forth or all the way around. It's pretty cool. It is a gimmick, but it's pretty cool. Speaking of hitboxes, his loop shots have a hitbox radius of 0.5. This is not great. A hyper bloom has a radius of one meter. These are 0.5. His scale spiker cannon has a radius of three. So he'll be able to hit multiple enemies with his scale spiker cannon within his loop circle. We do have the ICD for this data. Loop shots once every two seconds, scale spikers once every 1.2 seconds. So these things functionally won't have ICD. You'll be applying once per N2E. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. He's a burning character, so whatever. I don't know how to explain this. Kinnick's teams? We're talking about teams now, by the way. Kinnick's teams are Reesley's teams. Emily, Shanling, Bennett. Farina, Bennett, Shanling. Farina, Baiju, Shanling. These are all Reesley teams. Interesting. But yeah, uh, Kinnick is a full attack scaling character. He lives or dies kind of just by how much damage he does. And lucky for him, he does a lot of damage. He did it. He's beating the uh, he's beating the fraud allegations. He does a lot of damage with just Bennett burst or just Bennett uptime. He has some synergy with Emily in the fact that they're both Dendro characters. They lower each other's ER recommendations, but neither Kinnik or Emily necessarily need to burst. So it doesn't ultimately do that much. The primary reason to play double Dendro with Kinnik is to ensure that his passive is functioning. But Emily is a much more compelling character to use with Kinnik than someone like Nahida or Baiju. Just because Emily does damage. I'm not gonna say Emily is a must grab character to play with Kinnik because they can very easily release better supports. Especially as we go into Natlin and there is a set that if the support character is from Natlin, the entire team gets damage bonus. This is a set that currently isn't really usable for Kinnik and Mulani and will get users in the future. These characters will get better. They will get better supports. So while Emily is very good right now and possibly very tempting to go for, it might be worth saving and grabbing Emily on a rerun if she's still relevant. I would also recommend possibly even getting Kinnik's five-star weapon before Emily if your pulls are in a limited quantity, especially if you don't buy the battle pass, which brings us to weapons. Hey, big surprise, his, uh, his five-star weapon's really good. It's about to get buffed apparently, so this is all inaccurate, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. Uh, it's 25% better than R1 Spine currently. It might get better, it might get worse, TLDR. Serpent Spine R5 is his next best. Then you can use Beacon of the Reed C or Wolf's Gravestone R5 if you have one. 
Now, notice how I said R5 for Wolf's Gravestone? That's because R1 Wolf's Gravestone is worse than the new craftable. Earthshaker. Earthshaker is the new craftable weapon. It gives you damage percent for triggering a pyro-related reaction, such as burning. Nice. Why is Shengling a problem? Kanik's elemental skill cooldown is 18 seconds, so if you want to be pedantic, he would like to do 18 second rotations, Shengling can't. But beyond that, let's talk about a more realistic issue. Shengling has a very high energy requirement, and she's being played in a team where the only buff she gets is Bennett. She's not doing a lot of damage, and she's kind of getting in the way. It is nice that she does do damage because the best version of Kanik's teams have been it because Kanik is a full attack scaling character. That also brings up an issue for Kanik where this boy does no damage without Bennett. The same way Arlequino is not a great character without Bennett, Kanik is not a great character without Bennett. It's pretty likely we'll get a Bennett and Shengling replacement this year, but it's worth mentioning as a serious problem. Kanik's gameplay has significantly less issues than Mualani but he does do less damage to compensate. He's a pretty chill dude. If you like him, you're gonna have fun with him. He's strong. He has good constellations if that's what you're interested in. What are his constellations? C1 is 90% crit damage on her scale spike or cannon hits of his elemental skill. It ends up being a roughly 16% damage increase. His C2 gives him an extra 1000% denger damage and larger AOE on his first scale spiker cannon shot it ends up being a 30% damage increase. C3 is his elemental skill, buffs his normal attacks, 30% increase. C4, 5%, makes his burst free. It could be zero, depending on how you play him. C5 is his burst, doesn't do that much. C6 gives his scale spiker cannon shot a bouncing effect, so it will bounce between enemies. It's pretty fun. That is a six meter or a three meter AOE three meter radius AOE, so the same as the scale spiker cannon initial, not the C2 one, the C2 one is a five meter AOE. So Kinnik is a pretty chill and uh, good character. Pretty chill, pretty good, pretty normal. He's not the most exciting character in the world for me, but that doesn't make him bad. It just means I'm not excited. He's very normal.